With the extinction of the dinosaurs 65 million years ago, a large void was left at the top of the food chain. The absence of predators gave smaller mammals and reptiles like rodents, crocodiles and snakes that survived the asteroid impact the chance to thrive and evolve, and thrive they did. In this video I take a closer look at one of the apex predators to rise from the ashes of the dinosaurs. The largest snake to have ever existed, Titanoboa, coming up. Titanoboa was a gargantuan prehistoric snake that belonged to the Boaidae family, a family of non-venomous snakes found primarily in the Americas. Related to modern day boa constrictors and anacondas, Titanoboa whose name means titanic boa was a fearsome predator and was one of the apex predators of its time period. Titanoboa lived about 5 million years after the extinction of the dinosaurs around 60 to 58 million years ago during a period of time known as the Paleocene and dominated the first recorded prehistoric rainforests of South America. Titanoboa was first discovered in 2009 in the coal mines of the Cerrajon Formation in northeast Colombia by a team of international scientists led by paleontologist Jonathan Block and paleobotanist Carlos Yaramillo. It was only after the recovered fossils were sent to the University of Florida for analysis that graduate students Alex Hastings and Jason Bork realised the fossils were that of a snake and not of a crocodile as originally thought. This revelation led to the discovery of the large snake ever. Only one species has been discovered so far and its scientific name is Titanoboa serahonensis, given in honour of where the fossils were first discovered. Titanoboa was a monster snake and it is believed after studies from the fossils uncovered at Serahon that this titanic boa could grow to sizes of around 13 metres, which is about 43 feet, and weighing just over one and a quarter tonnes. This snake was so big that it would have measured about three feet in diameter, making Titanoboa twice as big as the biggest snakes alive today. Snake fossils are hard to find, so it is entirely possible that Titanoboa could have grown to be much larger. The sheer size of Titanoboa would have made moving around on land difficult for this giant reptile, so it probably spent most of its time in the waters of the surrounding swamps and rainforest, where it was able to move much easier due to the buoyancy of water. This behaviour is much like the anacondas of today. When hunting, being a non-venomous snake, Titanoboa hid and camouflaged itself among the vegetation and ambushed its prey, latching on with its huge jaw and backwards pointing teeth, and then wrapping itself around its prey and squeezing and crushing its victim with around 400 pounds per square inch of pressure, the equivalent of you with three Eiffel Towers crushing your chest. This process is called constriction, and the snake would have done this until the animal suffocated and stopped breathing. Once the prey animal had stopped breathing, Titanoboa would open its mouth fully and swallow its prey whole the same way modern day boa constrictors and anacondas hunt their prey. Its diet would have probably consisted of fish, smaller reptiles and crocodilomorpha, which were giant prehistoric crocodiles. But how did Titanoboa grow to such a large size? From studies of cold-blooded reptiles alive today, we know that their size and activity is directly related to the ambient temperature of their surroundings. The warmer the climate, the bigger and more active a reptile can be and can grow to. Cold-blooded animals are unable to generate their own body heat like mammals and birds can, and rely solely on the temperature of their surroundings to control their body temperature. They are hot when their environment is hot, and cold when their environment is cold. The biggest reptiles alive today all live near the equator, and as you move away from the equator, temperatures drop and reptiles get smaller and more docile. During the Paleocene, the 10 million year period that followed directly after the asteroid made 75% of all species on Earth go extinct, 65 million years ago, the average ambient temperature of the greenhouse climate was about 10 to 15 degrees centigrade warmer than the average temperatures of today. The hot and humid climate enabled reptiles to grow to enormous sizes. Forests dominated the Earth's landscape, even at the poles, and Titanoboa inhabited the region where Central and South America exist today, with average daily temperatures of around 32 degrees centigrade, which is 90 degrees Fahrenheit, some 8 degrees centigrade or so warmer than the average temperature of the Amazon rainforest today. So why then did Titanoboa go extinct? The most probable reason behind why Titanoboa went extinct is most likely down to cooling global temperatures. Being cold-blooded, Titanoboa relied upon its warm climate to survive. When that climate cooled, that would have directly impacted its survivability and therefore led to its demise and eventual extinction. But theoretically, Titanoboa in some regard could make a comeback. As global temperatures continue to rise, the snakes that exist today near the equator will grow in size too, and we could eventually see another gargantuan snake emerge. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this this video be sure to leave a like it really does help the channel out and if you're new here consider subscribing and I'll catch you next time.